Well, welcome aboard, everybody. Um, this is our uh, August meeting. Only one more month to the AGM. But um, as we all know, we're down in this terrible lockdown. There's not much we can do about anything at the moment other than um, carry on as best we can. Tonight, we've got a speaker um, which is one of our uh, well-renowned and uh, highly respected uh, four-wheel drive gurus, Alan Gray from Terrain Tamer. Um, he uh, seems to pop his head up in just about every single thing that has anything to do with four-wheel driving and, um, and a great wealth of knowledge. So we'll just go straight to a little video introducing Alan and Alan will come on board and um, have a yarn about uh, um, what, what his favourite topic is tonight. <laughs> He's been in the industry a long time. Oh, I've worked, I don't know how many years I've worked. Exactly how long, nobody's sure. 60 years, 70, 60 years. That's no, yeah, it's 62 years. That's terrible. He loves his four-wheel driving. We want to get bugged, we want to get mud all over us. And one thing's for sure, he really knows his stuff. The vents are handy because if you've left your keys in the ignition then you could open one of the vents and just about get your hand up and pull the keys out. His name is Alan Gray. Well, I'll tell you what, for someone who learned his trade on horse and buggies, mate, you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the most experienced motor mechanics in Australia and head mechanic at Terrain Tamer. Started off uh, thinking I'd like to be a mechanic because of all the grease and noise and, and clanky things that were around and uh, ever since then I've sort of enjoyed it all the time. He even worked on the first Land Cruiser to arrive in Australia. Yes, I did work on the first Land Cruiser that came into Australia. Uh, it was with the TIS organisation. Great to work on it and see the differences between the later ones and the early ones. When you ask Alan, you ask Terrain Tamer. Yeah, when I worked on the first Land Cruiser that came into Australia, that was uh, not the day it came in. It was... Uh, Tease Toyota had it up at Seymour when we introduced the uh, Hiluxus and uh, we did a lot of work on the old 25 or whatever it was then. But uh, yeah, there is a huge difference, of course, between then and now. But sometimes uh, you wonder if they are any uh, less uh, useful then than what they are now. Tease certainly found them uh, the way to go. Just about myself, some people ask me all sorts of questions. In 1948, I uh, did my apprenticeship. Uh, I was fortunate to be in a place where they had panel beaters, spray painters, uh, carpenters. I struck for a blacksmith for quite a while and I learned quite a lot about things that have even helped me today with uh, hammers, chisels. I never knew there was such a thing as a hot chisel. Everybody talks about a cold chisel, but uh, yeah, it was uh, great to work in those times. Uh, just after the war, we had to take uh, off gas producers, um, off cars, because our, <laughs> the ash used to tear the motors apart. Um, Headlights used to have a cover over them and, and the differentials used to be painted white at the back. Um, it was good. The, the place was to land in the Mary Bridge and I worked there for quite a while. Uh, some of the funny things that happened, I could read a book, but uh, I remember when I first started, they used to do a lot of tyres and, and uh, because the rubber was very short and uh, people were repairing all things. I used a tyre lever and cut my eye pretty badly one day and the old boss came in off and said, uh, Hey, don't waste time with that. And he spat in me eye and rubbed it in and said, "Now get back to work, and you can make the time up later on tonight." You know, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the way it is today. But uh, uh, we were allowed uh, ten litres of fuel in those days, or two gallons roughly, to uh, per week. Uh, it's with coupons. Um, the um, other strange thing that happened one time when we was there was we were working on a forty-seven Chev, and we had to get a part from America for it. It was a small part, uh, just on the outside of the gearbox. And we told the guy it probably about 10 or 14 days before he got it. When it arrived, he um, gave it to the mechanic and he slipped under the car and went to get it and hold it in his mouth like we often do with things. He swallowed it. We had to ring the uh, guy and tell him, look, it'll probably be another four or five days before we can get your car going. Uh, and uh, needless to say, the mechanic didn't hold it in his mouth when he went underneath to fit it again. Uh, went from there to work on cranes for a while and then with AR Nails where we had 24 forks and cranes. That was great because uh, big machinery fascinated me. I got into the business years ago because uh, uh, we had, uh, I liked the noise and the, the, the fiddling around and the mysterious uh, things about machinery and I still haven't changed that. Um, with Nails, it was a, AR Nails I was working with. Um, uh, one thing happened there that's strange. Uh, we had a, a guy come in with a truck of a morning and said the horn doesn't work. 
So we cut a we kind of underneath and it was a big RVB horn that's had a big bowl in it. He levered the bowl off and nearly got scalded to death. Uh, it, was, uh, it was full of water and uh, the uh, resistance in the horn had heated the water up and it was actually steaming all over the place. We, we had a lot of forklifts and they were in not good condition. There wasn't so many checks on them then as there as these days. Took them, had to take them down the waterfront to get them passed down there and they just cautioned me year after year, this is getting worse, this one. What's all the tins underneath all the oil leaks and you know, you can't bring this anymore. And he said, another thing, the fire extinguisher is empty. So I went around the corner to a BP place and filled it up with gear oil and come back and gave it to him. And he said, gee, that was quick, uh, but don't bring it down here again. And I thought if, if it ever caught on fire and they squirted the stuff on it, it wouldn't be any good coming down the waterfront then. Um, went to Kenworth after that and it was a great place to see where the first time we had service, special service tools and books to read. And well, I couldn't imagine the guys being out playing footy when all these, these books and information was there for Kenworth. It was just a great place. I uh, went to um, Teach to Hatter um, and um, was looked after forklifts, Victorian service manager for forklifts. That was good. Um, they sold out to um, uh, another Neil's Motors. Um, worked with them for a while, but they eventually closed down and I opened my own business in Spencer Street for quite a while. That was great fun. Um, it taught too much to, to, to people and you don't get... Don't get work done, but it was good. People still refer to me as the guy who, uh, you go going for a grease and oil change and you finish up the shakes the wheels and finds this and finds that. Uh, and uh, it was a great time and we learned a lot. We also took up um, some off-road racing in those days and built a high ace with a 350 Chev in the back. And that worked quite well, but eventually went into four-wheel uh, four, uh, four racing, four-wheel drive racing. And uh, we did quite well. We got up to second in Australia out of that. And, uh, uh, still got one of the vehicles. Uh, my children, one of my kids, he restored it for my 80th birthday. Uh, the high ace is down in the shed and it looks beautiful. It's better than new. Uh, at that time, I was racing uh, Speedway, solo Speedway for 15 years. That was a good money owner and uh, one of the best times of my life. Where the, um, I do a bit of racing now with autocross. I've got four autocross cars that we actually take um, help kids learn to drive. I've got a bit of a property up here at Wallen and uh, we take them around the sheep paddock, give them a bit of a, a tuition um, and uh, eventually go to uh, one of the autocross tracks. And that's really good training for young kids. And uh, uh, some of them turn out to be excellent drivers in drifting and all sorts of things, but certainly safe on, safer on the roads. Um, but to, eventually um, sold my business to Don Kyatt or to Frank Hutchison as, as the owner. Um, and that uh, we first of all ran the workshop, but then eventually got into reconditioning uh, now I'm, uh, we changed, we're out to, out to Sunshine Road Tottenham, where we've got a huge workshop, a huge area for storage. We carry 50,000 different line items. We have export to 60 countries around the world. We've just opened a place in Africa. We've got a big place in France. Uh, this morning I got a, a bit of a request from uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, so, you know, we don't necessarily want to be bigger, but we want to get better. And, and uh, I'm very pleased to work with a company that uh, where I used to to break things now, I'm to break things if I can. Uh, it's good if I pick up a part and look at it stronger or better. A lot of things, I think we've got 12 different items in a gearbox that we've uh, strengthened and we own our own tooling. So we've got control over where it comes from and uh, most of our equipment, our uh, parts come from um, either Korea. A lot comes from Australia now. We find that some of the uh, people uh, designing and making stuff in Australia is excellent. Um, develop things, test track, we've got our own test track as a lot of your people have uh, perhaps been on. Do a lot of a lot of filming, we have uh, did uh, 10 DVDs up at um, Caratha with uh, Julia Jess in, in actually preparing her vehicle. Uh, that was hard, long hours, but very good. We then went to Mount Isa and did one where we produced a, a, a vehicle for her to uh, round up cattle and we actually did a, a genuine uh, cattle muster in Northern Territory. Um, and that's where some of you have probably seen where we did some testing of the suspension uh, and the only way I could uh, test out suspension was have a bucket of water and see how much water splashed out over a rough predetermined track. And that was interesting and funny, but when I come back, I decided that uh, I'd make a small one and I, I made a, a small splash on as we call it. And it's surprisingly accurate. I know it sounds rather odd, but uh, we use it sometimes for shock absorbers. Um, 
so that's probably, you know, at the moment we've got new parts, which uh, I do a lot of, uh, there's 4,000 garages that I can visit in Victoria. And whilst I did visit for a while now, I'm mainly on the phone talking to them, just ke keeping them up with some of our latest uh, uh, things that we do. Uh, the parabolic springs is interesting. And I just noticed that in towing some very heavy loads in my Hilux, I've bent the tow bar. So the parabolics are still standing up, but the tow bar's not. Um, catch cans, they're vital things. If you've got a common rail diesel, if you haven't got a catch can, then the intercooler is not working. I can guarantee that it'll be full of oil. We have a catch can fitted to a, a you know, late model Hilux the other day, and it, in 3,000 kilometres, it had 150 mils of sludge, soot, and carbon. Now that goes straight into the turbo, intercooler, inlet manifold, EGR valve, and then eventually around the injectors and does some serious damage. Catch can's a great thing. We've now got disc brake rear kit, which reduced the, the, the braking distance of a heavily loaded vehicle by 25 metres because it, it has weight transfer and puts weight on the front wheels so as the front wheels can really do their job. That's just on the market now. Filter inserts to stop dusting for V8s. That's an insert that we made up just to make that top seal work better. Heavy duty seals, you now buy a seal with the rubber insert and outset. It has a seal that turns within, it's off. Uh, so it doesn't require a good surface to run on. That's been a winner. It's a very good thing. Uh, boots for four wheel drives. Uh, we, we've got a boot that fits around the outside of a four wheel drive to keep the mud and slush off it. Um, I'll finish up with one other thing that's of interest the CV joint. We don't have much in the way of warranty. Um, but if you talk to CV joint manufacturers, they say the maximum angle that it should work on is 30 degrees. Now, if you don't put a diff drop kit in when you do a raising of the suspension, you'll find out that the angle of the stub axle is just on 30 degrees. That's not too bad, but on some of the Hiluxes, which don't have steering knuckle adjusters, if you go on a full right hand lock, it's 36 degrees. And here the manufacturer says, whatever you do, don't go over 30 degrees or you'll break. Uh, the spacer in for the, between the balls. So that's given us a little bit of interest to know what to do in this case. But So we look at things and see if we can improve them. Okay, that's enough for me at the moment. If uh, you've got any questions, we might pick them up after. Thanks for that. Okay, Alan, thank you for that. I have one question right now is someone sent in a, a question saying, how much will the new brake discs help an 80 series with stopping? Well, for an 80, well, we've also got um, disc brake, tail shaft disc brakes coming out. That'll stop them oh. the handbrake. I know that. Uh, we don't. I don't know price. I don't know pricing as yet. Uh, I normally look after problems, not pricing. But um, you give a call to anybody at uh, head office, and they'll let you know more about the, that. The question wasn't about how uh, money. It was about how much, or I guess, how, how much distance would the new discs help an 80 series with stopping? Is it the same as the other one you you mentioned, 20, 25 metres? No, no, it's not. Um, we, I haven't tested the 80 series. Okay. Uh, the test was done by international people and... Uh, uh, I'm not sure. It was a loaded huge in actual fact. It wasn't the okay. 80 series, but um, no, no. we certainly will come up. It's only just hit the market. Probably. Well, it'll be in the again. range there somewhere. Um, one other question. What do you think of old man EMU's BP51 high performance bypass shock absorbers? Are they worth the money and do they work? I, I can't comment on another person's product really. Uh, all I know is that we've spent a lot of time on our remote area or in remote canister shock absorbers uh, mm -hmm. to get them so as they won't cause trouble. A lot of the people fitting them have actually had the hoses wear through brake hoses and cause a lot of trouble. Uh, I can't comment on okay. ARVs or anybody else's product. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, that's fair call. All right, Laurie, we should go to that video now. And Gray isn't your average 83 year old. This chassis is meant to twist seven inches corner to corner. Well, it's very hard to describe me. Nobody else seems to understand me, so I'm battling to understand myself. I'm trying to find out who I am, but in one of these days I'll find that out. Four days a week, Alan is head engineer at this four wheel drive parts supplier. If uh, something goes wrong, 
and then they drag me down to have a look at it or see if I can fix it. My card now reads the engine whisperer. This is a bit of a rust bucket. He's an amazing character, huge amount of energy, yep. and then started working for us 20 years ago and uh, certainly livened the place up. And his natural charisma has made him a social media star. Really, that happened quite naturally. He would teach me about my four drive that I was driving, and, and we would discuss, you know, about sharing that, and let's do a quick video. And that was, that was funny because it kind of just organically grew. It's where we drop Alan in the middle of nowhere and he helps people uh, fix their vehicle and make them stronger. What are your YouTube videos about? I've got no idea. I'm not, I've got a kerosene phone at home, that's about all. Are you right back there? I can't. Well, no, you don't. I've lost my teeth. You know. What? My glasses. I told you to hold on to your phone, Sam. <laughs> I think we have about 60,000 followers on Facebook. I think we're up to a million views on YouTube. And the most recent one on social media was like 260,000 views of just this one video. Ah! No. <laughs> Something bit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I might be able to send you teeth. Oh, that one was about suspension. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, he certainly, I think, has reached that celebrity status in our little niche of the world anyway. Do you yeah. get recognised ever? Oh yeah, all the time. Um, yeah, all the time. I, I, no matter where you go, you know, once or twice a day. You go to my head if I was a bit younger. He's very uh, charismatic. He's very curious. Anything that that he doesn't understand, he wants to know about. And he's um, and loves people. Like he really loves people. Hi guys, welcome to Superman. Thanks for coming tonight. Alan's love of people is most evident on Wednesday nights when he volunteers with the Vinnie's Soup Van, a charity that supports the homeless. And I've been pretty regular. I would probably only miss maybe four nights a year because I I know it sounds silly, but I need to go out and be schooled or be educated by these people on the street. Al is by far our oldest volunteer. I shouldn't say that, our wisest volunteer. <laughs> yeah, so you live in a car here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just up the road. I think, and I love coming to the food van because it's yeah. the only place I can eat. Yeah. yeah. And we like so, so Yeah, hard. I've probably got 30, 40 people on the street that I, I would recognise anywhere and they all wave to me or sing out to me or, you know, it's, it's great. I just get out there and... Um, I just love being with him. Do you want something to drink or eat? Or yeah, yes, please. What do you want? Uh, I love a cup of soup. He's someone who's very giving of himself. Um, there's been times that, and, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not joking, he's given away his jacket to someone who needed it, his belt to someone who needed it, and even his socks. We got a veggie sandwich for young people. Beautiful. That's all I need. Why do you love working on the soup beds? Uh, probably, I, I'm sort of a Christian guy, and, and uh, it just says that, uh, you know, there's a word in the Bible that says, in as much as you've done it under the least of these my people, you've done it under me. And I just think you don't find Jesus Christ in church, you'll find him in Flinders Street Station. You say an apple a day, I'll keep the doctor away. Now, I'm experimenting here with a pear a day. An onion, <laughs> an onion, an onion a day, I'll keep everybody away. <laughs> you know, you walk past somebody, you either spit on them or you help them, you, you can't you. ignore people. And sometimes when you put your, you know, sometimes I put a loaf of sliced bread under a guy's head because it's on, on cast iron railing or something and talk to him for a little while um, and you realise that uh, somebody's got to help him feel more like a human being. On behalf of everyone at St Vinnie's. Oh, really? Yes, absolutely. Wishing you a happy birthday. Thank you. And, and you many, many happy returns, Keith. Yeah. We met Keith last night. What's his situation? He's a very gentle sort of person and I gain a lot of strength from those people. You know, I think if he can make it, I can, you know. Uh, he's, and uh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. How long have you known Alan? Um, oh, probably about five or six years. No, he really looked after me. He looks after everybody really well. Yeah. And it's um, a great service. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. My last birthday was when I was 21. I've never had a party since. <laughs> Two, three, four. At the end of each workday, Alan drives back to his property in Wallen, about an hour out of Melbourne, to his wife and their array of pets. Come on, come on, come on, come on, don't muck around. Here you are. Fruit salad and ice cream. Blondes and bikinis, come on. You left your apple, your teeth will fall out. Could you reach up there to the back and get a couple of mugs, please? Do you ever think about retirement? 
No, absolutely not. No. If you're going to retire, you need to start at, say, 25, not at 80. Because, you know, I jokingly say, look, when you retire, you have an affair, you buy a boat, you paint your house, and after that, what do you do? Sit in God's waiting room. I mean, you know, you've got to plan for that. But I don't plan to retire. I've got too many things to do. Wow. <laughs> what a story. That was some story. That was fantastic. I couldn't stop laughing at some of the some of the yarns he was telling. I mean, goodness me, if we could we could spend a night and still we could laughing our heads off. And uh, what a great effort you're doing with that community work. That's just sensational. I love it. We've got one question for you, Alan. Um, yeah. What do you think of DP chips on modern common rail diesels? Oh, I've got to be a bit careful here. I'm not in favour of them. Um, I think so that as it is, if you look at if you look at if you look at chips, um, you take say for instance the earlier model uh, diesel, um, it's five times stronger if the factory fit a turbo or a chip, and I I don't think that um, my vehicles. I think they're running at their extreme limit at the moment. Um, I'm running a Hilux and I've got three hundred thousand out of it, and it's running like clockwork without a chip or. Uh, I don't think that vehicles are, are made to take an extra input of power and still have a long life. Um, when you put a chip on, you've really got to think about putting a clutch in it and an exhaust on it. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, uh, you're talking 10 grand or something minimum um, to do it properly. And then you've got brake problems. I, I tend to think that uh, overall, I'm, although I know we do sell chips, or we did for a while there, um, I don't think that chipping or altering things uh, gives you a long life. Um, not in my humble opinion. Fair enough. Um, at the moment, we've got no other questions. So if um, you want to hang around for the rest of the meeting, oh, hello, there's one popped up. Corinne has asked, uh, will there be a tail shaft handbrake kit for the 150 series? We're not sure yet. We don't handle the, the handbrake kit for the tail shaft yet. Um, <laughs> I'll probably get shot for even mentioning, but we're having discussions. It's coming along with the disc brake rear, um, which I'm very excited about. The handbrake uh, will follow. Um, we've had it passed. It, it, everything looks good at the moment, uh, but um, you could direct in inquiries to head office, but I'll say there's Alan again, Blavin, but um, it's worth a try to ask because uh, I've seen it, uh, the pictures of it and the demonstration of it. Uh, and it certainly looks as though it is necessary because uh, whilst the law says a handbrake should hold on any hill, there are some uh, series that you've got to pull it on pretty hard to make it work on any hill. Yeah, so uh, you could keep asking, but um, it's not yeah. on our shelf yet where the disc brake uh, the rear is at the moment. Do you have any idea of the timing? Um, Matt Lilly's asked a question about timing for the 80 series tail shaft handbrake release. Any ideas about that? We, uh, I haven't personally. Um, you would talk to head office, probably Ben at head office would be the guy to, yeah. or if somebody likes to ring me, I'll find out for him. Um, uh, I did ring today to make sure that I can mention the disc brake rear, which is, um, um, apparently in stock, uh, but uh, I, with the um, tail shaft one, uh, if somebody like to ring work and get them put through to me, uh, I'll find out tomorrow, no worries. Okay, Gary Cooper asks a question, what are the downside of parabolic springs on a 79 series 2013 model? Well, I'm biased, I must admit, I can't find any downsides at all except that uh, if it's a cab chassis only, we'd use a three-leaf parabolic. Um, not that it'll break or bend, but it sags a bit if you put a cab camper on or it's a double cab or you put six toolboxes in it. So we've got out a four-leaf one now. And what I've done with the four-leaf is actually reduce the pressure on the third leaf and increase the pressure on the fourth leaf. So now we've got a spring four-leaf, carries heavy weight and rides like a three-leaf. So I can't see it. And uh, we've just had um, 40,000 kilometres done on a test with a camper on the back, uh, across our back. Um, and that was a four leaf and it's absolutely perfect. It hasn't sagged at all. It's been brilliant. 
Um, so, yeah, I don't see any downside at all. They've, they allow, if you drop your foot off the clutch suddenly, they allow uh, the disc to flex much more. They uh, twist up better. They're lighter, of course, uh, quieter, uh, better on the driver. Uh, and I can't see any downside in them at all. Okay, you, you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, uh, having a break um, um, on, uh, on tail shafts and so forth. I've, still, I've got an old 40 series Land Cruiser. And the yeah. the drum brake that's on the back of the gearbox is not worth a cold pie in any any time, um, other than when you first clean it out and and it might work for a couple of days. So we adapted a a disc brake for uh, from a I think it was from a Datsun 120Y onto the back, and it worked fine for a while until all the oil or the diesel and everything was flying out of the motor, ended up encompassing the disc and so forth, and it didn't work too well. So I've um, that four-wheel drive has since been restored, and I think you were one of the judges at the National Four-Wheel Drive Show that um, I won, uh, I think it was the People's Choice um, um, uh, thing of it. You were one of the judges at the time. And um, I put a, a um, 60 series um, motor and gearbox and diff in, into the 40, um, yeah. mainly because we wanted to put a, a handbrake on the rear the rear wheels because by the time yeah. we put a five-speed box in, the tail shaft would have been about four inches long. But, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> and that was a so big upgrade. We have a, we have a Sorry, little dog bone thing. that We have an extended dog bone thing that fits in the handbrake to actually make them work a lot better. Okay. Uh, but still people like uh, are very interested in that uh, disc brake setup. Yeah. All right. I haven't got any other questions for you. So uh, um, if you've got nothing more to say, then we'll just carry on with the meeting. So Laurie. Um, Th thanks thank, for having thank me. Very much. Yeah, well, thank <laughs> you very much, Alan. You're always a pleasure to have, even when we uh, run into one another in the in the workshop or on a four-wheel drive show somewhere. It's a wealth well, of knowledge. Well, I really miss the four-wheel drive shows. I, I used to go yeah. to all of them, but uh, obviously they're not on now. And uh, I really miss them. Yeah, yeah, like it's, so do we. Um, <laughs> all right. I've got one more question, Eric, from Facebook. Far away. Yeah. Uh, David McAllister asks, will they be releasing a 200 series air box strengthening plate line that they have for the 79 series? Yes, we will. It's, it's under development. Of, uh, not in, uh, in one of our branches at the moment. It's under development. Okay. I, all right. It shouldn't be long. Not much. But, um, we should, we should uh, be developed. Uh, I got a note about it yesterday. When, when the COVID virus thing's over, I think we'll get the social uh, secretary on to a visit down to Terrain Tamer and have the club have a club visit there um, um, and uh, yeah, walk around the, the new the new parts because I, yeah. a lot of people tend to think that um, the um, upgraded parts are, are for those who want to modify and and. Um, Spend a lot of money on on toys for uh, for the vehicle rather than um, things that make them much more reliable. Considering that's the places true. we go, yeah. that, that's true. Yeah, there's, there's, we cater for all types, but uh, there's a lot of things that are no dearer than normal. But just that if people know about us, we I mean, yeah. some of the gearbox mods have been great. With the new shock absorber was great. The, uh, the parabolics are brilliant. The, and the catch can. Anybody who hasn't got a catch can on really needs to ring me up because I'll talk to you about catch cans there. They're doing 10 things. Also, there's a little book I wrote that's available free if anybody wants to how to live happily with your common rail diesel. That's been translated into 17 languages around the world. Um, and it's just an interesting little book that people can get for free if you want to write in or ring in or something. Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll get on to that. And Alan, Alan, Matt Lilly's just given you a plug on Facebook saying, Terrain Tamer has excellent pricing. Wow. <laughs> Uh, it was, we're after quality rather than pricing, but uh, <laughs> what, uh, the word around the campfire is what we're after. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, you've been extremely helpful to us tonight. It's been a great, uh, a great uh, talk. We really appreciate your time. So we'll so move bring, on. Bring, bring um, me bossy. Bring me, bring me bossy as me arise. <laughs> does he? Ah, there's He's a few right. jokes about that. So we'll leave them alone. Yeah, yeah we will. <laughs> okay. All right, Al. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. The next item on the agenda is our webmaster, Laurie Miles. So over to you, Laurie.
Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, just one thing, Alan. If you want to stay and watch our video in a few minutes on Davey's plane, you're quite welcome. You don't have to go if you don't want to. And there may be a couple of more questions. Yep. That's uh, it. John. That sounds good. Yep, okay. Webmaster, not much to report, but uh, just one thing you may have noticed when I did Weekend Wrap this uh, month, I indexed the contents page. Some people find it frustrating when they're online trying to have to page through or find something. If you click on the content item you want, like a particular trip you want to read, just click on it and it'll take you to that page. So this is a little extra I put in the magazine this month. So that's about it from me. Um, we're over the trip convener, Viv. Um, your uh, your turn now. So when you're ready, Viv. No worries. Thanks, Eric. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all keeping busy and everyone's gardens looking beautiful. I'm sure. Um, Alison contacted Alison Williams contacted me today to advise me that the Ark Adventure Day that was supposed to be held on September 19 and 20 has been postponed until 2021 due to the corona um, restrictions. But I'm very hopeful that the two trips that are listed at the moment will go ahead if the current restrictions are eased. When the restrictions are eased, I'm very hopeful, again, for a few more trips to be listed so we can all get out and about and enjoy our good country, even if it'll only be Victoria. Fingers crossed. That's all from me. Back to you. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Viv. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is uh, Yark. So, Brian Stewart, um, if you've got your ears on, over to you, yep. mate. Yes, thanks, thanks, Eric. Right, yeah. Um Hi there, fellow inmates. It's... Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot to report either. Um, just thought I should just check in and let you know that uh, the regular maintenance team are ready to go as, as soon as uh, we're permitted to. Uh, we've been holding our Yark management meetings via Zoom and we've had around about 16 people participating in that. Um, the team have been busy doing a bit of paperwork and, and stuff. Um, they're currently putting together some risk management strategies for tasks and equipment that's done and used at the maintenance and construction weekends. Uh, we've, we've, all, we've been lucky to have a fellow club member, Sorry. Brett Dyson, who lives not far from the property. Mm -hmm. He's been able to drop in and check on conditions recently. And who reports that, that all is secure, the tank's overflowing, there's lots of green grass, and it's looking really good. Um, yes, we're all suffering from, suffering with the um, can't go to Yark syndrome. And so we're look, all looking forward to, to getting up there. So hang in there and stay safe and don't forget, don't forget your medicine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Good on you, Brian. Mate, it'll be like, um... Once the COVID virus is over, it'd be like the mad rush from Melbourne to the to the west, uh, to the east uh, at um, at Yark. It'd be like covered wagons in a mad stampede heading up there. Anyway, moving forward, the next item on our agenda is Liz Mills um, um, on education. So over to you, Liz. Mr. President. Um, good evening, everybody. Hope you're all keeping well. Um, firstly, I'd like to say a thank you to all the newer members uh, for your patience. We're not able to give you very much this year, but it's worth hanging in there. This, people in this club have an awful lot to offer, an awful lot of knowledge, so it's worth hanging on. And when you can, get the chance to talk to them about all the questions you've got, because there's always somebody there that can give you a hand. Um, firstly, I've got a trip planning camp cooking Zoom course coming up on Wednesday, the 2nd of um, September. It's just a basic course, um, particularly for newer members. Um, I'm no expert, but I'll give you all the information that I've learned over the last few years. Um, we've almost filled it already, so we'll see how we go. And if we get a lot of people that want to to do another one later on, then we can look at a date later. Um, 
for the people that have booked in and, and are going to book in, um, I'll be sending you the Zoom connection shortly. So have some pen and paper there on that night um, for any information that you want to write down. And I'll be having a guest speaker, a member who will talk to you a little bit about how she cooks with the buddy in her car. Good. Uh, next, the tyre repair course, 10th and 11th of October at Yark. David and Duncan are still crossing their fingers, crossing their legs and everything else that they can cross, that we can still bring that to you. Um, so um, people that are booked into that, hopefully that will go ahead. If not, we'll have to rethink it later on, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. The first aid course on the 20th and the 21st of February, $155 with a $50 deposit. Um, that's slowly booking up now, but you've got plenty of time. And that's all in the magazine and on the uh, web page. Photographic course at the end of March, 13th, 14th at Yark. Um, there'll be more information on that nearer the time. And again, the chainsaw course I'm hoping will be run um, at Yark in May. That's to be confirmed and I will certainly let you know as soon as I know more about that. So, um, as you can see, the background there I've got, we had a, we've had about three of those cooking courses up at Yark um, the previous years. And um, hopefully we'll get one of those courses running again next year as well. So that's all for me. And um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Keep safe. Bye. That leads us to a video that uh, Laurie wants to do. Um, it's uh, Laurie and Heidi's 2019 Davies High Plane Adventure, edited by Steve Mac McAdam. Heidi said she cleaned it out for you, David. Thanks. Thanks, Heidi.
Coming down nice and easy, is it, David? Uh, yes, I left my phone in there, though. You left your phone in? Yes. And, and without any reception? Yes. Yeah, that's very important. Yes, it is. <laughs> the trouble with it is I won't be able to play games on the track. Wow. So start turning to the right. Oh, it's beautiful. So Frank, what did you think of the Davies plane track? It's all all right, except I bent my sidestep. It was good. The first good. bit was where we bent the sidestep. Oh. Slipped off the edge of the rut and, and went, or the ridge I should say, into the rut. We got out of there. Good. Didn't need to call for recovery. <laughs> and Roger, what did you think of the uh, no, Davies plane good, track? Good fun. Good fun? Good fun, yeah. Excitement plus? Very exciting in the wet, I imagine. Yeah, it would be very exciting in the wet, yes. Challenge in the driving. Does he? Yeah. Is that why you sit next to him? That's why I don't drive most of the tracks. <laughs> I give him the pleasure. <laughs> good. So, David, how was Davy's plane? Uh, very good. Very good? Yeah, I liked the track up and I uh, liked the fact that we passed all the vehicles, all the vehicles, at good spots. You mean so they pulled over and we passed them? Is yeah, that what you mean? Yeah, yeah I thought and, that and very good trip leading because we didn't have to pull over once. So I noticed that, I noticed uh, that we too. kept driving through and uh, the opposition uh, very, very good all pulled off. So skills. well done. We, we... Have you got the diff lock on? I assume Dave's got a diff lock on because he's going slow. Okay, his traction control on. All right, you wouldn't have get, you wouldn't be getting up that speed without traction control. Big smile on his face. Oh, no hands. Okay, up to come, Toxie. few times on previous trips. Yeah, up you come Charlie. Bit of, bit of uh, showing a bit of leg there with uh, True Blue. Remember Steve, this last one may challenge you. Awesome Steve, well done.
that was interesting. I haven't been up there for a while, Davies Plains. Been up Tom Grogan and places like that many, many years ago. But anyway, there's one question down here in question answers from Alison Hilton. Thanks, Laurie. Great shots and fabulous film. Oh. Um, all right. Well, it was wonderful having Alan on board. Um, it's always a pleasure to be with. Um, one of the latest, truest gentlemen. Um, I also worked for Tees like Alan did and know the story of the first land cruisers and how they, how they appeared in this world through Tees uh, up in the Snowy Mountain scheme. But anyway, if that's the end, uh, well, I'm Trips Conveners to all panel. Well done to Steve for the video editing. Yes, it was a good, uh, it was a good video. Thank you for your attendance tonight. And, um, Thank you once again, Alan, and thank you, Laurie, for uh, helping get him on board with all the technical problems you had. Um, got one more chat from Gary Cooper. Thanks for the last mag with the old trips. Okay. Thank you to Gary for that, please, Eric, for the comment about the old trips in the mag. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it for me. So thank you once again. Next month is the AGM, and we'll um, rock on. Good night, everybody. Good night.